Good afternoon, Len Wo. Uh, my name is Nathan Fitch. I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer from Kush Rai. Um, I currently live in New York City and I'm a filmmaker and visual journalist. Um, and I'm here in Pohnpei to show Island Soldier, a feature-length documentary that I made about Micronesians serving in the U.S. military. Um, and the way I came to make the film was I was living in Koh Rai in 2005, and I was running an art center for young Micronesians who like to draw and paint. And one of the young artists I was working with got recruited and left and went away and uh, went through basic training and then deployed to Iraq. And then a year later he came home and he had really changed. Um, he'd lost a lot of weight, he spoke differently, and I just got curious, like, what is it like to go from a tiny Pacific island to war and come home again, and what are the, the challenges and that, that experience? So that's why I made the film. So one of the, the challenges of making Island Soldier was I was filming in Koh Rai, a little bit in Pohnpei, and then military bases around the U.S., so Georgia, Colorado, and then I went over to Afghanistan. So. Uh, so it was a lot of like flying, and I came back to, to Micronesia maybe five times to film. Um, so the film was shot over the course of five or six years. Um, and it, it's been screening around the U.S. for the last year um, at film festivals. And then it's going to go on TV in mm -hmm. the U.S. To, for distribution. Well, I think... I think people who join the military in a time of war, whether they're from America or Japan or Micronesia, you go away to a war and like there's no way that's not going to affect you in some way, right? Um, but I think what I was curious about is because it's so calm and peaceful in Micronesia, how, how is that compared to like Afghanistan or Iraq or you know Syria or one of these you know really war torn places? Like how does that? And one of the interesting things I discovered was that some of the Micronesian soldiers I was talking to related to the Afghan people, the people in these other countries, um, more closely than I would have thought because sort of developing countries, the people have brown skin like the Micronesians, um, and sometimes the Afghan or Iraqi would, would talk to the Micronesians and say, hey, come, come stay with us, you're, you're more like us than the Americans. So that was an interesting discovery that I made, that, that, that there was this kind of connection. And also, I think the Micronesians sometimes were better at learning the language, because they had already, they already speak Pohnpeian or Koshrayan or Chukis, and then they learned English. So then they go to Afghanistan, and they need to learn Pashtun. And I think they understood, or, or were maybe better able to make an effort to learn that language, because they've already had to do that in their life, versus an American who's in English as their first language. So that's one thing I learned. So Island Soldier is really about the emotional journey, like what, you know, not to give away the whole film, but a mother loses her son. And, uh, and I think one thing that was important to me is that, obviously, the loss of a soldier matters anywhere, but in a small island where everyone knows each other, where everyone's related, that impact is big. In, in the U.S., which is a huge country, if someone loses their son or daughter in a war, it affects the family, but because it's so much bigger and because people are less, the families are less connected and less um, strongly knit, I guess, it doesn't have the same impact. I think that one, the death of one soldier from Panape or Koshrai or Chuk or Yap really affects the whole island and people really feel that in a way, so I wanted that to be conveyed. And I wanted to take the audience on a, a journey, like what is it like? And so it's a lot of, it's, uh, you know, everything's in Micronesian voices. I didn't, like, narrate it. It was important for me that it be told in their, you know, their perspective of, like, the journey and the, the questions that, that arise. And um, one, one thing that came up is that when the veterans come home, not all the benefits that they should get are extended to Micronesia. So I think that's something that hopefully the film can address is how if the U.S. is going to recruit for Micronesia and promise people um, health care and loans and things like that, um, we need to figure out some way to either to basically to provide more benefits for the people here or help them cover their, their costs to go back to the U.S. to get treatment. 
So, so one of the questions that people, that Americans have when they see it is like, why would these people leave? They live in this beautiful, these beautiful islands, you know, seems like there's plenty of food, good fish, like why leave? Why go to war? And I think that the, the motivations are complicated and multi-layered, and that's the reason it had to be a film. Um, I mean, I think economics are part of it. There aren't a lot of jobs. You can join the military and make a lot, of, a lot by island standards. Um, and I think there's a sense of wanting to support your family. Um, you know, like a, a, an enlistee from the U.S. who's making an army salary is probably just supporting themselves, but all the Micronesian soldiers I've met are sending home money to support their families. So I think that that desire to help the community, to help your family is a part of the motivation. And I think, especially with the older Micronesians, there's still a memory of the U.S. liberating the islands or, you know, the, the period of World War II and in the sense of gratitude to, to the U.S. And I think with the younger generation, there's, maybe that's not as strong, but I think that, uh, that the power of America and its, its place is a, I think people see America as benevolent, as like a helping country that's helping Micronesians. Mm -hmm. I think there's a sense that, that by serving in the military, that's sort of giving back to the U.S. in exchange for some of the stuff that Micronesians are getting. Mm -hmm. So Island Soldier's been screening around the U.S. for the last year at different film festivals, and some of the, the best screenings have been in places where there are Pacific Islanders, right? Like in Hawaii, we had a screening, mm -hmm. and according to the people I talked to in Hawaii, Micronesians don't go to the movie theaters too much because it's really expensive and they have big families. But the movie theater was maybe half Micronesians. And because people are so connected, the people in the audience knew the people who were in the movie, and so they have this emotional connection to the film, and so it's always really great to, uh, to watch the film with an audience of Micronesians. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just screened in uh, Prague in the Czech Republic, so in Europe for the first time. And a uh, Micronesian soldier stationed in Germany drove like three or four hours with his whole family to be at the screening. And it really, you know, everyone else in the room knew very little about Micronesia or about this subject, but having a soldier there with his family just there's like a level of emotion that kind of gets added when, when someone from the Pacific is there to, to watch and to kind of talk about it afterwards. So that's been neat. So in terms of uh, a violent soldier, I'm back in the FSM screening it for the first time. We screened it yesterday in Panape to a full house. All three movie theaters were completely full and it was really great to, to show it in Micronesia for the first time. And so tomorrow I fly to Koh Shrai and we're going to screen it there and I think that will be really great because some of the, the characters who are in the film will be there and then they can talk about you know, their own experience and the, the issues that the film brings up. Um, and then we're going to keep touring the movie, I think it's going to go to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Germany, San Francisco, LA in the next few months. Um, and then. We're trying to figure out how to get it on TV for in the U.S. so that Americans can see, learn something about Micronesia, learn something about the relationship and about the uh, the high recruitment rates. So I, I would love to to do more. I mean, one one thing is that I think there's a chance to use Island Soldier to do community screenings and to kind of build awareness both in like Hawaii and Guam and the mainland, but also in in the FSM about what the experience of being a soldier is like. And I think that could be useful for young people who are leaving to join the military. And I think it could also be useful for their families to know when they come back what they may have been through and kind of have a better idea of how to, how to handle them. Because I think right now it's, it's such a different world. I think it's hard for communities in Micronesia to understand what these people have been through and why they may not be able to adapt immediately back to island culture. So yeah, that's, that's the hope.